Harry's Wife, part 77.9, Time's Up. Many of you, of course, have naturally seen that Prince Harry and his wife appear on the cover of Time magazine's 100 Most Influential People issue. And not only their appearance within this list and as cover stars and the picture itself has resulted in an explosion of comment across social media and more traditional broadcast outlets. Of course, this requires analysis and we shall be looking at the pictures that appear of course, the cover picture, to discuss what does this signify, not only in terms of the fact that somehow two hypocritical individuals, one a narcissist, the other the victim, being dragged along on his leash, have wormed their way into a list which automatically devalues the credibility of that list and if you happen to be one of the other 98 or 99 people, I'm not sure if the Sussexes count as one. They certainly do in the mind of Harry's wife, because she subsumes her husband into her world. He is but an extension of her. Or, under the rules, because they're two people, they occupy two places. Whether the other 98 or 99 people think to themselves, oh, for goodness sake, What's the point of being on this list if those two freeloaders, those two hypocrites, appear upon it? It completely devalues it. And there may well be people, I haven't bothered to look at the list of the 100, I'm rather busy at the moment and don't have time to read through to see who else is upon that list, but there may well be individuals who thoroughly merit an appearance upon that list. And they're bound to think to themselves, hmm, Whilst I may well be pleased about my appearance, determined to be as one of the 100 of the world's most influential people, my state is somewhat devalued by the appearance of these two individuals. However, let us get on and have a look at the cover photo. There we have the cover photo. Somehow, Prince Harry has become shorter. Of course, we all know that as a consequence of the sustained devaluation that his narcissist wife has been subjecting him to, he has been cut off at the knees, and it would appear that not only was this metaphoric, it also appears to be literal, as he's lost some height also. And, of course, rather than appear at his natural height, he's made to look at a similar height to her. Now, there is much to gain from both their appearance in this list, and the photograph itself. First of all, the body language. She is at the front, he's behind, clinging onto her shoulder. And I know that it has been remarked upon that it's almost akin to him looking like a hairdresser, who's stooped behind her, both of them looking in the mirror intently, and he asks her, does this suit you, my dear? After he's just gone to work upon her mane. Of course, she has to be front and centre, because he is not influential. She regards herself as influential. And, whilst Harry might think that of himself, she doesn't. She regards herself as the powerhouse of the two, and he's there to do what he's told, and there to support her. And, as ever, she has to be front and centre. She has to be the one that's in the driving seat. Her narcissism dictates that at this photo shoot, in order to assert control over her husband, the intimate partner primary source in devaluation, over the photographer and over the wider world that she expects to view this cover photo, that she is the one that is in charge. And therefore, she asserts control directly by ensuring that she is front and centre. You get to see all of her. She is there, thrust to the fore. Harry, meanwhile... Time's up, matey boy. You really have now become fully emasculated. Whilst you are the victim of a narcissist, it's time for you to wake up. Whether you will remains to be seen. But you ought to look at this photograph and think to yourself, this is a woman who goes on about equality, 
This is a woman that goes on about how everybody's in it together, how everybody should look out for one another. And yet, here you are, shunted behind her, made to sit down so that you don't tower over her, and you're there putting your hand upon her shoulder, almost as if to say, please don't leave me behind. Please don't leave me in the gutter. You're so special. If Prince Harry were able to see through his emotional thinking, he should see this cover as a wake-up call. It demonstrates precisely how she sees him, merely a support act. You're behind me. I come first. And this picture encapsulates it entirely. Furthermore, look at the colours that they wear. Saint Megan of Woke, dressed in white. Look at me, pure, chaste, even though, of course, as rumour would have it, I've seen more action than a shithouse store in the wind. But I'm dressed all in white, pure. And, of course, the holier-than-thou attitude. Whereas the Ginger Prince is in black, and how apt, just how he is painted by his wife, because he is in that sustained devaluation. But there is much more that we see from this. Of course, the picture itself causes them to look entirely plastic. And of course, whilst Harry has genuine behaviours and emotions about him, she does not. Hers are all manufactured by her narcissism. And it's quite clear that the work experience kid in charge of airbrushing has really been putting in the hours on his internship here. All of a sudden, Harry has got much brighter blue eyes. Her eyes have a shine to them. Harry apparently seems to have been using some volumizing shampoo as of late, as the ginger mane looks particularly thick and luxurious, rather than being the balding pate that's behind all of there. There's certainly been quite a bit of work. She, of course, has been touched up also to try and make her look more attractive, and all it does is make her look plastic. And you see once again the unnatural formation of her mouth, unable to smile with any genuine warmth. What is that? Is she about to burp? Is she about to say to the photographer, make sure you get the best picture of me and fuck ginger bollocks? What is it? It's neither a smile or a grimace. It's somewhere in between. And that denotes the fact that she is unable, she is unable to exhibit a genuine smile. The eyes once again stare dead ahead, fixed, devoid of any warmth or humanity, in keeping with what she is. I understand that she is wearing a considerable amount of expensive jewellery. One can see what looks like a watch or possibly a bracelet, and two, rather, or three indeed, rings upon her fingers. I have seen a report suggesting that she is wearing something in the region of $364,000 worth of jewellery. Of course, this is all about equality, isn't it? And I'm influencing you by telling you that I can afford all of this jewellery, and most of you cannot. How's that for parity? Is that the vaccine equity about which you talk? Of course not. And once again, there is the hypocrisy. Look at me. I'm rich. I believe I'm influential. I believe that I'm powerful. People tell me that. And thus, I can appear wearing expensive jewellery without a thought for what might be done with that money to help people who are less fortunate than myself. But of course, the appearance is all. It's the appearance of caring. The presentation of the facade whilst actually not doing anything about it. It's also worth bearing in mind, of course, that this appeared on the day that Prince Harry turned 37, and in typical narcissist style, his own birthday is overshadowed by her taking front of stage, appearing on the front cover with him as the supporting act. His birthday is overshadowed. As I have explained previously, your birthdays are a form of wounding to us, because they're about you and not about us. All eyes are upon you. You're the one receiving the gifts, the praise, the messages, etc. And therefore that wounds us. It threatens our sense of control. And it is incumbent upon the narcissist as a consequence of the application of the narcissism to deal with that threat to control. Some narcissists cause a tantrum, 
kicking over the birthday cake, smashing a birthday present, storming off, calling you horrible names. Others sit and sulk. Others go overboard and pretending to be kind and supportive on the day as part of the facade, and then behind closed doors turn on the person's birthday, then spoiling it after hours, so to speak. Here, of course, Prince Harry's birthday means that it threatens Harry's wife's sense of control, and her narcissism trumps because she appears on Time magazine, which has been timed to appear on his birthday, so he's overshadowed, allowing her to deal with the threat to control by saying, actually, it's not about your birthday. Once again, it's all about me. Harry is once again devalued, but it's unlikely that he'll see it that way. He, as a consequence of the manipulative wiles asserted against him and his own emotional thinking, will regard himself as pleased to be involved in such a way that he swallows what he's been told. He does as what he's told in order to keep things as quiet as possible, to avoid the tongue lashing, to avoid the silent treatments, to avoid the malign triangulations. The photograph apparently was taken at their Monte Shit Show home in California, and Jose Andres, a friend and chef who runs the charity World Central Kitchen, apparently wrote that the couple are driven and compassionate and give a voice to the voiceless. Well, they're certainly driven in the pursuit of the residual benefit that is money, the maintenance of Harry's wife's facade, the assertion of control, and, of course, the receipt of fuel. There's no doubt about that. There is no compassion, not genuine. Her compassion is false compassion, that of the mid-range narcissist believes that they're kind and empathic, but actually their behaviour demonstrates to the contrary. And we know there is a long charge sheet in that regard. The behaviour surrounding Prince Philip and his funeral. The behaviour beforehand with the bombshell Oprah Winfrey interview whilst the grandfather lay effectively dying and slating the family of the 95-year-old monarch. The accusations which are falsified about racism and lack of support when apparently feeling suicidal. Where's the compassion there? There isn't any. Where's the compassion for all of us in terms of repeatedly thrusting your moronic faces into our visages on a near daily basis? There is none. Mr Andres writes further, Springing into action is not the easy choice for a young Duke and Duchess who have been blessed through birth and talent. Sorry, who are we talking about here? He's been blessed through birth. She's not been blessed with any talent whatsoever, you sycophantic, arse-licking turd. She has no talent whatsoever. She's a vapid, empty vessel. She can't act. She can't sing. She can't dance. She can't write. She can't build things. She can't research something to create a cure. She's a nobody that has managed through her narcissism to become overpromoted and find herself marrying the spare and then using that as a platform for telling the rest of us how we ought to behave and think. There is no blessing through talent whatsoever. And this individual is clearly a member of the coterie. Either that or has received a tasty bung to write all of this horseshit. He continues... They've been blessed through birth and talent and burned by fame. It would be much easier and safer to enjoy their good fortune and stay silent. Oh, most of us pray to our personal gods that they would. Andres writes, he adds, they run towards the struggle. Do they? I don't remember seeing them running around doling out diapers toward the children that need them. Rather, they organise for Procter and Gamble to dump them there. I don't remember anybody getting on a plane to go to Afghanistan to help out but rather just sit there making lofty pronouncements about something that isn't actually understood. So where you get this run towards the struggle is just complete bollocks. It was explained that the Sussex were humbled to be part of Time Annual's Top 100 list on their Archwell Foundation website. Well, believe me, that's false modesty, because Harry's wife will be cock-a-hoop. As a consequence of the recent humiliations of the Barmer birthday bummer, the booing at the National Television Awards, the failure of the 40 by 40 future faking. Of course, this was necessary in order to try and stem the tide of negative observations and content, and is, as I've mentioned many, many times before, 
part of the relentless PR machine driving forward to try and salvage the reputation for the purpose of the assertion of control, the drawing of fuel. I have little doubt that many passed hands in order to secure that cover position, that money was given to Time magazine to ensure that they were front of the parade. They've been included in the list by as a consequence of some clear brown nosing, but I would be most surprised if the PR agency hadn't paid a considerable sum of money to ensure that they got on the cover. Why else would one choose them? I am sure that there are far more worthy individuals in that list. They shouldn't be there. They aren't influential. And not only that, their behaviour demonstrates poor judgment, ill-considered observation, and hypocrisy. And as we know, it is all driven by the narcissism of Harry's wife, with Harry getting dragged along as the bewildered, unknowing victim. Of course, we didn't just get one picture of the couple that adorns the cover, but we were treated to a second. The second photograph I also see has most likely been taken at Monty Shit Show, and here we again see that the intern on airbrushing has been about his or her business. And Harry, this time, is allowed to show his natural full height. Hands in pockets, wearing a sort of greenish suit. He neither looks pleased, but of course, it's all about the sass on his left, standing there as if she believes that she's some kind of female James Bond in a pose which is about to say, make it so, I like Captain Kirk, or carry out my wishes. This time, wearing pants and a olive green sweater, we see Harry's wife again adopting the same expression that she does in the cover. It's quite uncanny, but entirely believable. The mouth is adjusted in the same way, not sure what it's actually doing, and the eyes fixed, just looking ahead. If you look at Harry's eyes, there's a degree of a flicker of something there. Hers, there are not. And the second photograph just once again underpins that this is all about her, but she is unable to convey any genuine emotion. That fixed gaze, the dead eyes staring forward, and the mouth completely unsure as to what it ought to be doing. This Time magazine is all part of her assertion of control through positive PR. It's assertion of control over her husband, over the photographers and the wider readership and media who have all reported upon this. Of course, I'm well aware that there has been quite a lot of ridicule directed towards the Sussexes as a consequence of this picture and their inclusion in the list. This will, of course, be challenge fuel. And the fuel is always welcome, love me, hate me, but never ignore me. And, of course, how will a challenge be dealt with? Well, she's not going to do it directly, contacting everybody who's written on social media adversely about them. Instead, it'll be dealt with with a combination of indirect assertion of control by saying they're just envious, they're the proles, they're just the haters. You're always going to get that. They're just envious of our success. We, we are best ignoring them. And then in other instances, quite simply ignoring the comments on the basis of maintaining a lofty approach within her own mind, thinking, I'm better than all of you. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm the influencer. I'm the one that changes things. You are nobodies. And therefore, the multitude of adverse comments that have been generated as a consequence of his appearance on time will be dealt with by an indirect assertion of control and remaining in withdrawal. And ultimately, time's up for Harry. This shows better than anything else his emasculation, as the ginger hairdresser stooped behind his wife, reduced to being the same height as her, relegated to second position, looking meek and pathetic, clinging onto her shoulder. It's all about her. St. Harry's wife of Monty Shitshow, Queen of Woke, Empress of Liberalism, believing her own hype once again.
and it just goes to show she is not going to go away anytime soon. Do ensure that you like this video, share it, and thank you for listening. I'm H.G. Tudor.